Boss, are you sleeping? No? Okay. I just want to follow up on the conversation we had last time, and uh, I want to talk to you about no income proof business loan. And uh, I want to talk about the top seven mistakes that you need to avoid if you want a fast and massive loan approval. Don't you go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you're to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about no income proof business loans. And I want to really emphasize the top seven mistakes that you need to avoid today if you want a fast and massive loan approval. The first thing is business entity not having the right business entity it's really important when if you if you are applying for a no income proof business loan i'm talking to you boss you need to have an ein okay you got you need to have your employer identification number because the lender is going to is going to pay attention to that you need to have the proper legal structure first of all if you have a sole proprietorship don't even try to get a no income proof business loan your ass will be denied okay you got to have a legit business you need to have a structure a business where you are divorcing your personal affairs from your business from your, from your business affairs this is important so when we talk about legal structure we are speaking about LC LP LP S Corp C Corp and you need to have a certificate of good standing so once you have an LLC or an LP for instance based on the state where you are where you're operating from you got to you got to talk to you to the authorities and you need to have a certificate of good standing we're going to have an entire show on that topic, but it, it is important because the lender might ask you to provide that because think about it. You're asking the lender to approve you for a loan without income proof. You better have other evidence that shows that, hey, listen, you are indeed running a legit business. OK, are you abiding by all the regulations and uh, all the regulations and laws in your industry? Let's talk about regulatory compliance. This is important. The lender is going to ask to make sure that you have all the licenses and permits that are applicable to your industry. Again, just to make sure that you are running a legit business because, hey, if something goes wrong, they might lose their money because you will not be able to pay them back. So they want to make sure that you are legit. And also, they might want to look at your, your accounting processes. In other words, is your financial reporting top notch? First of all, you can't provide a proof of income. That's fine. But what about uh, debits and credits? What about simple transactions? What about receipts? What about purchases? How do, you how do you account for those? Do you have a system in place where you are basically accounting for your transactions? Do you have an accountant in-house? Have you outsourced the whole, the whole uh, accounting process? Are you using accounting software? So big decision time, boss. Big decision time. You need to make a decision. You need to think about the business entity so if you want to get a no income proof business loan think about how you're going to present the, the entity itself the business all the legalities around the business number two a big mistake you're making if you don't have the proper tax returns oh yeah oh yeah remember though you don't need a business tax return if the business is new when i'm talking about business tax returns i'm speaking about what form 1065 i'm talking about 1120s or 1120c4 c corporations okay L the lender may want to see a a, um, a series of personal tax returns if your business is new so if you have a startup not a problem you don't need to provide your 1065 or 1120s or 1120c but the lender will want to see your 11 your 1040 particularly your Schedule C. In other words, if you have been a sole proprietorship in a while and uh, you just uh, want to uh, you want to get into a legit business, the lender will want to see that also. So tax returns are very important. Do not underestimate the power of tax returns, because if you can't prove your business, your business uh, income, your business's income, the lender want to see at least 
traces of income that you have accumulated that you have earned in the past right that, make, that makes sense and if the business is not new if you have an established business boss i'm talking to you if the business is not new then you need to provide your corporate tax returns specifically the schedules k1 the letter wants to see who is behind your business and how the profits are distributed how the how the losses are distributed okay so again if you don't have if you cannot provide proof of income you need to provide the tax returns because uh, tax filing is an obligation it is it is a legal obligation providing proof of income is not okay and also the lender might want to see your uh let's say your your strategy or the the uh, the reality in terms of paying payroll taxes are you filing on a quarterly basis are you filing on an annual basis because payroll taxes are things that are that need to be uh, complied with at the federal level right but also at the state level so this is really important so money 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 show me the money on your tax returns you can't show me the money in your uh, income statement okay i don't you know that's fine okay but i need to see how much you're filing in terms of income with the IRS every single year. Mystic number three, cause I'm talking to you, your FICO score. Yeah, let's have a conversation about that. You know, you're probably sitting around, walking around, you know, I'm a CEO, I have, uh, I have 725, I have 750, I have 800. Oh yeah, I'm the boss. When was the last time you checked your credit score? Because talk to me. Talk to me. Let's have a conversation about that. When was the last time you, you really took the time to look into your credit score to make sure everything is accurate? That every element in the credit score is accurate. I'm not, ta I'm not talking to you about how I'm, I just browsed over the credit score. No, no, no. We are speaking about granularity here. We want to be granular. We want to be detailed. You got to look at everything on the credit card and make sure that, hey, what, whatever you whatever you have on the credit card is accurate. You know why? You know why? The lender is going to check your credit score. Oh, yeah. When we talk about no income proof business loan, you think you'll be off the hook? Think again. Think again. Because before approving your ass for a no income proof business loan, the lender will check your credit score. You don't, want to, you don't want to provide proof of income, okay. But you need to provide proof of a good, a good FICO score. This is important. So you want to check your FICO score and fix errors before you apply, okay. And if you happen to spot any adverse, any derogatory items on your credit score, you know what to do. You know the, the drill, right? You want to dispute them. Oh, yeah. You want to fight them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to contact the Spearing TransUnion Equifax, whatever it is, whatever it is, those things need to get out. They need to get out of your credit, of your, of your, of your report. Okay. And the thing here is you can even sign up with free FICO score providers. You have a constellation of uh, providers that actually give you your FICO score for free. We're talking about what? Credit Karma. We're speaking about Credit Sesame. We're speaking about Nerd Wallet. We're speaking about Wallet Hub, you know, you know the drill. You probably know, you probably have heard those names. As a matter of fact, your your current credit card issuer may even give you access to your free to your FICO score for free. So you have uh, several places where you can check your FICO score. Okay, and you need to do everything to elevate your score. I'm talking about your payment history, your CUR, your DTI, your credit credit mix, your length of credit history. Okay, DTI stands for debt to income ratio, CUR credit utilization ratio. Okay, so credit card, credit card, credit card. Credit cards are quintessential in making sure that you have a high FICO score. So you want to manage the, the way you uh, you want to manage your credit cards properly so you can elevate your FICO score. So mistake number three, do not underestimate the importance of uh, your FICO score. Mistake number four, uncle, I'm talking to you. Your bank account. Oh yeah, if you if you thought that you can get you could you could actually get a no income proof business loan without a bank account, think again. That's a big mistake because the lender wants to make sure that you are going to pay them. How are you going to pay them? 
by actually going to uh, to a cash uh, paying system or are you going to use Western Union or MoneyGram? No. They want you to make they really want you to pay them through a bank account. So you need to have a bank account and uh, and, they, and you need to have a business bank account that is uh, in the name of on, on the bank account should be the name of your business okay because we're talking here about no income proof business loan so when we talk about bank accounts we are speaking about two things number one you need to have the bank account and number two most important you need to provide your last three bank statements you know why I'm gonna tell you why the lender can reconstruct that's the big word they can rebuild your profit and loss statement based on your on your bank account on your bank account data oh yeah this is this is a, this is totally possible especially if they ask you if you have your main bank account your main business bank account so they can see all transactions they can see all cash inflows and cash outflows and based on the cash inflows and cash outflows they can rebuild your profit and loss statements okay because assuming that uh, you are using the cash method of accounting your cash inflows and cash outflows sort of a mirror your your income items and expense items that's what it is now if you use accrual then there will be a different thing but just trying to trying to oversimplify a very complicated matter what what i want to say here is that you need to have a bank account so that the, your your um, your lender can see your cash inflows and cash outflows and when we talk about having a bank account make sure that you have a checking account and a savings account in some cases you can even have investment accounts an investment account an IRA for instance that way you are not only showing the lender that you have some kind of net worth that you're not just a cheap ass applicant looking for extra cash because you need to actually pay the, the money back I mean we're talking about no income pro business loan but you need to actually be in a position where you have to pay them back okay and the last thing they want is just to uh, actually hire a collection uh, collection agency to sort of uh, you know bother you at midnight so you can pay them back they don't want that so money 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 you need to have a bank account do not underestimate the importance of a bank account when you apply for a no income proof business loan mystic number five you got to have a clear idea what you're going to use the money for that's what we call use of loan proceeds See, the thing here is that if there is no clarity in your own mind, guess what? You will not be able to explain it to the lender. And if the lender does not feel like you have a clear explanation for the loan you're asking for, they're not going to give it to you. Why should they give you money if you don't know how to, how to, how to use the money? And don't laugh because I'm hearing you laughing in the, in the background thinking this is uh, something trivial. This is really important. You'll be surprised the number of uh, entrepreneurs who apply for a business loan and they cannot articulate, they cannot say clearly what they're going to use the money for. I'm not talking about giving uh, broad, broad explanations about, oh, I'm going to use the cash for inventory. I'm going to use the cash. I'm going to use part of the cash for, uh, for, uh, for suppliers. I'm going to use part of the cash for payroll. Boss, we need granularity. We need to say, hey, 20% of the loan will go for this, and this is why I'm, I'm spending this way. 30% will go here. 10% will go here. This sounds professional. This sounds logical. This sounds cerebral. It, it means that you have thought about it, okay? Because lenders have a regulatory requirement to ask applicants what they're going to use the money for. To sort of combat among other things aml money laundering this is an aml practice an anti-money laundering practice that make that that the, the feds have put in place to make sure that people are getting are getting money for legit purposes so what are those legit purposes you can use the cash to buy inventory you can use the cash to take care of payroll to expand your business yeah you can borrow for advertising you can use the cash for working capital and one thing that's very important, and if you want to really uh, get the loan that you're looking for and that you deserve, you need to explain and make sure that your explanation is in sync with the operational activities and your business model. What I'm trying to say here is that if you're telling the lender, hey, listen, I need some cash. OK, I need some cash to pay for inventory. And you do not go a little step further and telling him or her. I'm talking about the lender here and explaining how that inventory is going to contribute to your to your bottom line. 
you might not be approved. So you always want to go a step further in explaining and, and, and giving the rationale for why you are allocating this money to uh, this item on the budget and not this item on the budget. Okay, very important. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks. We are still having a discussion today about no income proof, business loan, and I'm just sharing with you the top seven mistakes you need to avoid today, boss, today, if you want a fast and massive loan amount. Number six, let's talk about projections. No, I'm not talking about movie theaters. <laughs> I'm talking about projected financial statements. You need to prepare projected financial statements. Oh yeah, I don't care if you don't like math, if you if you don't like Excel spreadsheets, whatever. I don't care. You need to have that. All right. You 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 can outsource the whole thing to someone on Fiverr or or Tapdale or Upwork or freelancer.com. You can hire a local uh, accountants or CPA or whatnot. You need to have projected financial statements. Okay? You may not have proof of your actual income, of your actual business income right now. But you can't get away with telling with the, you cannot tell the lender you don't have projected financial statements because to project financial data you don't need anything you you, you just need your operational data okay so when we talk about projected financial statement we are speaking about balance sheets cash flow statement p l and most importantly a lot of people forget that your stockholders equity statement the lender want the lender wants to see that also okay we have trend you, you we have transactions where the lender wants to see your projected financial data over three months some may want to see over six months over one year you know why because projected financial statement tell the lender your analytical mindset your analytical point of view how far you can project yourself how far you believe your company will be in existence it's called in accounting going concern that's what that's how they call it in accounting going concern okay and the thing here is that projected data show a path into the future and the thing is you don't need to prove income to forecast future revenue think about that i'm going to repeat it again it's so deep you don't need to prove income to forecast future revenue remember that i want you to write it down write it down write it down so big decision time boss do you have a projected financial data have you thought about it? Have you th have you thought about putting something uh, something down? You better. You better. If you want to get a no income proof business loan, you better have projected financial data. The last thing I want to talk to you about is uh, a business plan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're probably just thinking, oh, you know, I don't need a business plan. I just I just need a business loan. Well, you need a business loan without proof of income. You need to give something to the lender. Give me something to chew. Come on, boss. Come on. Come on. Give me something. Give me something. Give me financial data. Give me projected data. Give me something. Okay. Talk to me about your business. Give me something about your business model. Where do you see yourself in five years? In one year? In two years? Let's have a conversation about that. Let's be ambitious here. Let's be professional and here. This is important. I, I'm going to say it again. I, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Don't you give me a cheap ass business loan that you have downloaded from the internet and customized to suit your, your business. No. This is cheap. And do not be stingy. You want to write an, an original compelling business plan that talks about your business. Your, your business. Not somebody else's business. Not a, a template that you have down. No, 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 no. You got to quit that thought. Quit thinking that. Okay. This is lazy thinking. This is uh, ineffective. It doesn't work. You need to actually have a business plan that is customized to your, to your, to your, to your business. Yeah. The lender wants to see, because again, the lender wants to have a clear idea about your business. You don't want to provide proof of income. Okay. I'm fine with that, but I want to learn more about your business. Okay. I want to learn more how your uh, different activities fit into your business model. 
I want to learn about how your thoughts about your cash flows from investing activities, from financing activities, from operating activities, all those things, how, how they fit into your business model. Okay. What are the things you want to do, say three or five years from now? All of these things are in the business, in the business plan. Okay. And so when we talk about writing a business plan, I'm not asking you to write the business plan, boss. If you have no knack for writing business literature, that's fine. You know, that's fine. Hire someone else. It's not that expensive. It costs $100, $200. Imagine you, you trying to apply for a quarter of a million, no income proof business loan. And you can even, uh, you cannot even uh, disburse $200 to take care of business plan. Come on, come on. We got to stop being stingy here. So outsource the whole thing. You even, you even have business plan software that allows you to write your own business plan. We've, we've covered this on other shows. You have Enloop, you have Biz Plan, you have Life Plan, you have a lot of plans, a lot of business plan software tools out there that allow you, that allow you to do things yourself. Thank you so much, boss, for your attention to this conversation. I was talking to you about no income proof business loan, the top seven mistakes to avoid if you want a fast and massive loan approval. So first mistake, make sure you have uh, the right business entity. Second mistake, inaccurate tax returns. Make sure you have the right tax returns. Third mistake, not taking care of your FICO score or providing the wrong FICO score. Number four, your bank accounts. Make sure you have a proper relationship with a traditional bank number of, or credit union for that matter. Number five, loan proceeds. Make sure you have a clear explanation of the use of loan proceeds. Number, number six, you not having projected data. That's a big mistake. You want to have projected data. And number seven, your business plan. Write a compelling, a solid business plan for me. Thank you so much for your attention. I will speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay... Marvelous.